This semester, I made a chair. Not just any chair. I challenged myself to create a chair that looks like a nose. Making this chair took a lot of hard work and taught me about all the stages of the design process, and I had a ton of fun along the way. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I took an idea from this to this. Get ready to go on the design journey with me. I began the design process where most designers and architects begin, by sketching out a bunch of ideas. I wanted my chair to be inspired by the human body, so I thought of an ear chair, a mouth chair, maybe an eye chair. But ultimately, I was inspired and settled on the idea of a nose chair. The next step was to create a 3D model on my computer using a computer-aided design program, or CAD program, called Rhino. Using CAD software such as Rhino to build your models before actually building them in real life makes the design process much more efficient since it allows you to build things quickly and especially because it allows you to undo or retry things. There is no control Z in real life. I spent several days in Rhino simply experimenting, trying to find the best approach to creating a chair that looked like a nose. Since I wanted my chair to look like a nose, at first I tried taking a 3D scan of my face and bringing it into Rhino. However, I soon learned that this approach was not the best. Ultimately, the biggest challenge when designing a chair is figuring out how to actually build it in such a way that it is both structurally stable and comfortable to sit in. Now chances are your first design probably won't be your best. So how do we find this optimal structure? By going through a bunch of trials. You can see here just how much my design changed from one iteration to the next, as I tried to find the optimal approach to my chair. As you can see, my first prototype was not structurally sound at all. In architecture and design, it is super common to spend hours, days, or even weeks working on an approach, only to end up throwing it away in the end. I experienced this firsthand when working on my chair, and you know, it's just part of the process, since I was learning more and more about my design every step of the way. So now, it was on to my next approach. This time, with the goal of making a stable structure in mind, I decided to begin by hand sculpting a prototype out of clay. When I was happy with the way it looked, I drew guidelines on the clay for where I thought would be the best locations to split the chair up into flat pieces, since ultimately, I wanted to make my real life chair out of plywood. Next, I took a complete 3D scan of my clay model and brought that into Rhino, where I used it as a jumping off point for modeling my chair. And after hours, and hours, and hours of catting, I finally had my model of my chair. But even after all that work, it wasn't time to build my chair just yet. Before I could build a full-size chair, I had to build a scale model in order to prove that my chair was functional and structurally sound. So off to the laser cutter I went, where I cut out the pieces of my chair at 1 64th the size of my real chair, and then assembled them together like a 3D puzzle. Once my professor approved my design, it was time to go full scale. So I headed to the wood shop, where I uploaded my chair design to a CNC machine. A CNC machine is basically like a giant printer, but instead of using ink, it uses power tools to cut designs out of wood. Finally, after all that work, it was time to build. I spent hours in the wood shop cutting my pieces apart, sanding them down, and using a wooden mallet to hammer and hammer and hammer those pieces together. And slowly, but surely, piece by piece, my chair came together. And voila! After weeks of planning, prototyping, iterating, and building, I finally finished my nose chair. 